What is up everybody? My name is Imani LaRusa and today I'm going to show you how to make some really cool transitions like this. This is going to be beginner's tutorial, but I'm going to be using Photoshop and After Effects for this. So let's go. Let's start off by opening Photoshop. Create a new document and change the width and height to fit your composition size. I'm going to be using 1920 by 1080. So to create this effect, we're going to be using brushes to create the patterns. And you can use any brush you like. So for this first one, I used the torn paper brush. I found a free version on Brush Easy. I'll leave the link in the description below. Once you've downloaded the zip file, you'll extract it and you'll see this type of file. To import this brush, you can go to Window, Brushes, and then you'll click on these three little lines on the right, then click import brushes. And that's where you'll find the brush that you downloaded. So we're gonna be creating this animation in Photoshop. In order to do that, we need to go to window, timeline, and then create frame animation. And then you're gonna click on these little three lines that has a cursor in it. it looks like the After Effects composition layers. Then we're gonna create a new layer and then delete our background. So we'll just unlock it and then delete. And we'll zoom in and we see that this layer is extended out for quite a bit of time and we only need a few frames of it. So depending on how fast you want the transition to be is going to depend on how many frames you need. But typically I stick between two and four frames because we wanted to have kind of this stop motion feel to it. The aesthetic is torn paper and brush strokes and those are typically handmade, kind of like stop motion. So we're gonna cut this frame by going over to the scissors on four frames, and then we're just gonna delete the layer on top. So now we just have one clean layer that is four frames long. Next, we're gonna go over to our brushes panel and click a brush in our torn brushes preset. So with this specific brush set, I noticed that I see the crosshairs, but I don't see the outline of the brush. And that's just because the brush is really big. You could just decrease it by hitting the left bracket on your keyboard. So for this first transition, I wanna go from left to right, but as you can see, our brush goes up to down. So we need to rotate it 90 degrees so that it goes left to right. So I'm gonna go inside my brush settings and just rotate the angle to 90 degrees. So that now it looks like it's gonna go from left to right. So the whole objective of this effect is that we want to go from transparent to fully colored. And we're gonna do this by brushing on this torn paper to make it look like it's being torn. So each one of these layers is going to get closer and closer to filling in all the color because we're gonna use this as a stencil for our video. So first layer, I'm gonna start from the far left and make my way over to the right. Next, I'm just gonna duplicate this layer by hitting Command J, moving it over four frames. I'm gonna cut it right here with the scissors and then delete that top frame. And the reason that we duplicate the layer instead of just creating a new layer is because we need what we previously did underneath. So I'm gonna use another part of this brush before I switch over to a new brush because you don't wanna use the same brush going all the way through. So I'm gonna select a new brush and then rotate the angle of it 90 degrees, duplicate the layer before, and repeat the process. Like I said before, you could do this with any sort of brush. I used the torn paper, but you could use brush stroke or any sort of customized brush that you created. So now that we have our transitions all drawn out, there's a few different ways that we could export this out. And this goes for any sort of animation that you're creating in Photoshop that you wanna export out. I suggest going this way. Go to File, Export, Render Video, and instead of rendering an actual video, I render it out as a PNG sequence. So let's make sure to label our file and select the destination of where it's gonna go. Then instead of Adobe Media Encoder, we're going to go to Photoshop Image Sequence. Change the format to PNG. You want to use PNG because PNG has an alpha channel in it. Alpha channel is transparency. And then you wanna change the alpha channel to straight unmatted. Another great reason of using a PNG sequence over a QuickTime file is because of the file size. I exported out the same timeline, one in a PNG sequence and one as a QuickTime file. One was five megabytes and one was one megabyte. So if you're working with big animations inside Photoshop, this just seems like the smartest way to go. So if you've never exported out in a PNG sequence, essentially it's just all the pictures broken up in different frames. So this is what it's gonna look like, just a series of pictures. And I know you're probably wondering, how is this going to transform into a video? Well, I'm gonna show you. 
So we're gonna be recreating the transitions that I made for the project for Listos, California. So I exported out the footage without the transitions. So I'm just going to import that into my composition. Create a new composition, go to new composition, relabel your composition, and then make sure that your width and height is the same size as your video. Next, I'm gonna import my footage, turn the audio off and then move it along. So I want the footage to overlap because the transition is going to happen in between them. So we need to make sure that there's video underneath. I'm gonna create some folders to organize everything. So transitions, we have a finals folder and we have a video folder. Move everything in there, clean everything up. Then we're gonna import our PNG sequence. So in your PNG sequence folder, you'll see every single image broken down and organized by number. This is how After Effects is going to import your files. Make sure that your PNG sequence is checked. And now you can see that After Effects converted the PNG sequence to a video file. So it's not just a whole bunch of images. So instead of dropping this video onto our timeline, we're gonna create a new composition and throw it in there. So go to new composition, label your composition, and then drag your PNG sequence in there. So we moved it into its own composition because we want the final layer to just be a solid color because we're gonna use this as a stencil and alpha mat this video into the transition. So when it hits this final frame, we're gonna create a new solid, just make it black and show it as the last final frame. Next, we're gonna go back to our transition composition. That rhymed. <laughs> And then we're going to move our torn paper into our composition and put it above our second video. We're going to go to track mat and then go to alpha mat. And what this is going to do is grab the transparency from that composition and use it as a stencil to transition onto frame. That's why we have to make sure that the videos are overlapping because the video needs to show underneath. So next I'm gonna show you what kind of sells this whole thing. And what I feel like a lot of people miss when they're doing transitions like this is what is the effect from this cause? Like what happens from a paper being torn in in this direction? Like if papers are really moving, then the papers behind it should move. The papers in front of it should move. So in the second video, I already changed the position to move from right to left. And so I'm going to move the transition to also move from right to left because that's the direction that the video is moving into. So I'm just gonna flip this. So I'm gonna go to scale, unlink it, and then, then add negative onto the left number, which in this case is 100. This is going to flip our composition so that it goes from right to left. This is looking good so far. I'm gonna import the brushstroke one too. Now that I've made this directional change onto my transition, I'm gonna also change the position for the video to underneath to reflect that. So I'm just gonna add a small position, move it a little from the right to the left, add an easy ease on it, alter the speed, and boom. And that's gonna be it. I hope this tutorial was useful. If you end up using this, I'd love to check out what you made. Thank you so much guys for your support. I super appreciate it.